My name is Greg Dvorak. I've been working with Henderson for about 13 years. I've been working in the industry for about 34. What I'd like to talk about today, I know a lot of you guys are just getting into disc brakes, and I know that you've heard the pitch about how easy it is to change the pads out, how much faster it is to change that over a drum brake. I'd like to go into a little bit more in depth of some of the other concerns with maintenance with respect to disc brakes. Um, nothing in depth, but good for anybody that has them. Um, first and foremost is if you have a disc brake and you're not familiar with them, figuring out whose disc brake you have. Who's the manufacturer? What do you need to know about it? For every disc brake, there are a couple of real key points that make it very easy to figure out whose brake you've got. The first thing to look at is the retaining bar. The retaining bar for every brake manufacturer is a little different. Um, first, I'll start with the, the Henderson one. It's a tubular bar. First feature to notice. Second feature to notice is the attachment method of the, of the retaining bar. It's a socket head cap screw. The third thing to notice is it looks like it has three pads in it. It's not three pads. One of the pads closest to the body of the caliper is a spreader plate. So it looks like there's three, but there's only two pads regularly. The other thing to notice is that every brake manufacturer has an ID tag somewhere on the caliper. Most are on the larger guide pin. You can see this one here. The brake manufactured by WAPCO is very similar in shape and design. It also has a tubular retaining bar. The difference is the nut that holds the bar on, the nut is a, is a hex head cap screw. It also has what looks like that third pad. It also has the ID tag on the main guide pin. A Bendix air disc brake has a flatter, wider retaining bar with a cotter pin at the end. It has two identifiers for the brake. One is on the front surface of the caliper. The second, as is with the other brakes, is on the longer guide pin. So now you figured out whose brake you have. So what should you keep on the shelves to maintain the brakes? We have a suggested number of pieces to have on the brake. And the first thing you'll notice is we have a left hand and a right hand caliper. The reason there's a left hand and a right hand caliper, excuse me, if you look at the caliper, there's a large guide pin and a small guide pin. The reason for that is all the force coming into the caliper hits the large guide pin. So it's made longer and stronger to take that force. The second guide pin is smaller. It's basically simply a guide pin. There's no load that's taken on that pin. As a result, there's a left hand and a right hand caliper. They, the large pin is the pin that gets rotated into first. The Max 20 TC caliper cannot be put on the wrong side of the axle, but the other brakes all are, are handed but can be put on the wrong side of the axle. So you have to be careful whenever you're putting them on to ask for and then only replace the same appropriate caliper. As well as the chambers, or as well as the calipers being handed, the chambers are also handed. One of the biggest differences between drum brakes and disc brakes is on a drum brake, the chamber's fixed. It's fixed to the axle in a bracket. On a disc brake, the chamber is attached to the caliper body. As such, it moves about an inch during the application of the life of the brake. So your airlines have to be loose enough for, to allow for an inch of movement, but you want the, the minimum airline run to those chambers. As a result, you want the, the air or the uh, ports pointed inward so that the chambers are also handed right and left. Now, you'll notice there's also a U. It's an unhanded chamber, not a universal chamber. We have suspensions that are mounted in front, or disc brake suspensions that were the disc is mounted in front of the suspension. When they're in front of the suspension, because there's no other um, hardware to get in the way, you can actually swap the chambers from side to side. So there's an unhanded version as well. Nope. What we also recommend having on the shelves is a guide pin bolt kit, two of those, and one gasket kit. And we'll get into why and what you're going to look at in terms of maintaining things, but if there's nothing that you walk away from this from, you'll hear this time and time again. There are zero grease points on this system. 
that does not mean that it shouldn't be maintained. Maintenance means looking at the system. It means checking to see if you've got the appropriate amount of pad thickness left, rotor thickness left, that you don't have too much play in your caliper, that your boots and everything are, are intact and not broken and torn. Zero maintenance. There is no such thing as a zero maintenance brake. Every brake requires maintenance because it's only to look at the brake and make sure that everything is functioning okay. The second most important thing to remember is, I know you'll, you'll hear people tell you that you'll get that many miles on your brake. You'll never hear people that are experienced with all the different applications that we have say that. It's possible, but there are so many things that that's dependent upon. It's dependent upon where you're running, what you're carrying, what style of application you've got, what your driver is like, what your tractor unit is like, what the valving is like. Uh, is it a driver that tends to use the handbrake? All of those things come into play for the life of a brake, of any brake, let alone the disc brakes. As a result, everybody has to determine their own life. So what we typically say is, what did you get on your drum brake? You're trying disc brakes. You should look at those same maintenance intervals to look at that brake and make sure everything is still running okay. So what are we going to maintain? This is, this is the maintenance diagram for this part, but generically speaking, you'll be looking at these same types of components no matter whose disc brake that you have. What you'll be looking at is you'll be looking at pad thickness, you'll be looking at rotor thickness, you'll be looking at rock of the caliper so that you determine whether or not you have to change the bushings out. So whenever you're looking at this, again, you'll be looking at pad thickness, if you're changing the pads out, that'll be, the that'll be the time that you look at all of your boots. In this particular one, there are three boots. There's a boot for each guide pin, and there's a boot for the master cylinder. This is where the heat's being generated. The boots are silicon rubber. Like any boot, they're subject to heat. They're subject to dirt, debris that's underneath. So whenever you're drawing as your maintenance, you're going to be looking for tears, rips, twists in the boots. All, any of those things mean you change those boots out. If you get dirt in those slide mechanisms, this will not move appropriately. You may get simply uneven pad wear, or you may get rotor cracking. So when do you do the maintenance? Again, this is a little bit of a, a tricky subject. We have some recommendations. The recommendations are based on on highway running versus off highway application. When, what should you do? Should you take the wheels off every time? Again, this is very much application driven. For on highway, we recommend every six months, looking at that brake, making sure that everything is functioning properly, checking the pads and rotors for wear thickness. One of the auto service criteria is our major cracks in the rotor through the face are all over 75% of the length. We recommend you look for that too. Again, if you have to take the pads out, that's the time to start looking at everything. The caliper, move, the caliper moving freely. Again, there has to be some play in the caliper. If, it, if there's no play, then it sees, or it sees is. So you've got some play in the caliper, but if it's more than 80 thousandths when you measure it with the dial indicator, that's a sign of your bushings being worn. You have to replace your bushings. Adequate slack in the airlines. I, I mentioned the fact that, that the airlines have to be able to move. Well, that's a two-edged sword. There has to be enough play in those airlines so that that caliper can move freely but not excessive play so that those airlines would hang down and rub on the axle, rub on an airbag and chafe. Chafing in airlines right now is one of the big hot topics with CVSA. And the reason is, I, I, I mentioned it, but if you can look at this, at this picture, these airlines have enough slack so that this caliper can move back and forth, but they are close to the axle. If you have too much slack in those lines, they'll fall against the axle, they'll rub, they'll chafe, and that's what they're really looking for. So what am I gonna to use to do this, all the inspection? This is a, a tool that we came up with at Hendrickson. You use the tool, you can use it with the wheel on or a wheel off. And basically you open the tool up to look at pad thickness you drop the tool over top of the rotor to measure rotor thickness. And there's a recommended thickness for a pad change and there's a minimum thickness for a rotor change.
what else are you going to be using? Just like a drum brake, a disc brake requires adjustment. That the adjuster mechanism is inside of the caliper, but there are two tools to, to perform the adjustment. There's a cap, a rubber cap that fits over top of the adjuster nut. You adjust it just like you do a drum brake. You adjust it clockwise until the pads come out and touch the rotor. Back it off half a turn or three clicks in the case of a bending spray. It works the same way as slack, an automatic slack adjuster does on a drummer. If you're going to do more extensive work, if you find that your bushings are worn, you're going to be looking at the secondary kit, which has all the tools that you need to change out the bushings for the guide pins. Where else can you go? From our perspective, we have created videos that are avail available to anybody on the Hendrickson Academy. We, you can use those for teaching, you can use those as a supervisor to teach your mechanics. Um, there are videos for everything that I've mentioned, for changing the pads, changing the rotors, changing out hubs. We also have documentation, simple documentation for everything that I've talked about as well. And last but not least, there's me. My contact information is there, I have cards. I'm more than willing to help anybody with respect to this. From our perspective, the disc brakes are still relatively new to our market. So I learn as much as you guys do. Thank you. Questions? Is there just one pad that fits everything or is there different pads? Unfortunately, there are different pads. Everybody's pad, it's, it's not like a drum brake. Everybody decided to make their pads slightly different. Some pads may fit in other brakes, but the friction material would not be the same. So again, we wouldn't recommend it. What does Henderson just have one number? Henderson has one pad, one pad number per brake. Other questions? Well, last but not least, we don't have any more questions. I want to remind everybody that we are giving away. I can get this without. We are raffling off an Amazon gift card. So make sure that you register with the, the ladies walking around so you get a chance at the gift card. Thank you for your time, everybody. I appreciate it.